Review Podcast. A bunch of different views. <laughs> Your boys keep it real, man. I really like listening to them, man. They funny. Yeah. Son. They really speak their truth. What the hell was that? <laughs> what it do? What the been the ill? What good? It's your boy Mel. That was slightly more tolerable this time. I don't know why. I feel like you you toned back the ignorance and the you enunciated a little bit better. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? You know, I'm so proud of happen. you. I'm at you growing up. Look at you growing up. Right before our very eyes. Okay. All right. He's also the glasses of greatness, so there's that. You know, he wanted to. Thank you. Yes. (laughs) Don't don't encourage him. Do not encourage him. All right. (laughs) We we want him subdued a little bit. Got to break the spirit. Okay. Um, I'm Jay. (laughs) Very dramatic, bro. Can you stop talking over your co-host? I'm oh, sorry, man. It just sounded like you cried a little bit. You know, I'm, hey. <laughs> you take me through hell, bro. Every week. Every week. People don't know what we do, what happened. No, wait, no, pause. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. That comment, oh, yeah. that, that, anyway, Mike. Mike, Mike, do your intro again, man. My bad. I'm sorry. Yep, that's it. I'll, I'll yep, yep, that's there you go. And we're joined today by uh, <laughs> a special guest who is. We're very happy that is uh, staying with us as we blunder through this intro. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? Let the people know who you are and why you're great. Oh wow! Um, what's up, y'all? My name is Anthony Richardson. Everybody calls me Slim. I'm the uh, an all-around artist, jack of all trades, um, artist, actor, writer, illustrator, um, filmmaker. Uh, right now, I'm. You can catch me currently writing for the Boys uh, TV series on Amazon Prime. I'm a writer and co-producer. Nice, Peace Peace man Peace of mode. all trades. What did you just say? Beast mode. Oh, okay. That was your face was way more aggressive than that. That's why I was a little nervous. I was like, "Why are we? What happened? What did he say?" I'm like, you know, got to move some furniture. I'm sorry. Peace to all black people today. Um, so yeah, Slum, thank you for joining us. Um, appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got your start in film? Um, maybe what schools or you may have gone attended in order to get your start and then, you know, just kind of share your story. Sure, sure. My, my, getting to where I'm at is, is a very long story. Cliff notes. Um, and it went a bunch of different places and, and a lot of accidents. Um, but uh, I was an art student um, all through high school, went to magnet school, um, you know, visual arts, um, you know, illustration. I really wanted to become, at that time, wanted to become a comic book artist. Um, we got a job offer, but my mom was like, no, you're going to college. So <laughs> um, <laughs> my high school was a design school and uh, we, had to, we had to major in a, uh, in a field, whether it be uh, architecture, interior design, landscape or fashion. At the time, they, they've expanded since. Wait, um, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. We're, we're, before we get, we're, let's stay on this story real quick. So oh, you, you got an offer to do, to be a comic book illustrator. And your mom said no. Grade. Yeah, I was in eleventh grade. Yeah, I can see in that. 11, and your mom said no. As a Shut parent, down. as a Shut parent, I was in Miami, and it, would, it was for Image Comics, and they they were they were like, you know, come out to L.A. And I was like, show my mom the letter. I was like, yo, look, look, look this. They want me to apply. She was like, they molesting, they molesting people's over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. And you're not Asian, so uh, obviously you have a Caribbean background. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because uh, sure. those are the only two parents that would say no to some shit like that. Which okay, that? West Indian and probably Nigerian. Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot about Niger and Indian. Basically, Indian. any immigrant, any immigrant is going to say any immigrant parent is going to say no to that. Okay, so 
That's the Chinese folk in there too now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Get yep. right. I'm sorry, you want, to, you want to draw for a living? Excuse me, yeah. no. Okay, Except maybe so, Filipinos. They, they would have been like, yeah, that sounds cool. Go on and do it. Chase your dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Enjoy life. <laughs> I mean, they say that Filipinos are the blacks of the Asian community. They totally are, man. They're down as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So mom says no and kills your um your artistic yeah. dreams first. Destroyed right? that. I, I cried for a while. Um, and then I was supposed to, my school, we were uh, dual enrolled in college while we we're doing it. So I was getting all these college courses for, for interior design. And I was supposed to do it in... I was just fucking around. My school was way too close to Miami Beach. And uh, all of a sudden, all my friends are like going to like Carnegie Mellon and Pratt and all these places. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So when when do we apply for college? And they're like, oh, no, it's over. I was like, oh. And, uh, and I had schools that were interested in me, but I was just fucking around. So tell and, me about the conversation with your mom. Oh, I didn't have that conversation with my mom. Oh yeah, because Florida State, <laughs> Florida State happened to send me uh, a letter, and they said if you would like to apply late, you know, <laughs> blah blah blah. And I borrowed twenty five dollars from my mom to get a money order, put it in the mail, and I got like, mom, I got in. <laughs> that's beautiful. Hey, that's that's, 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 that's how I ended up at Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that that's an advantage to uh, Im- children of the immigrant parents. Oh, absolutely. They don't, know how, they don't know how stuff roll over here. So you can kind of, you know what I'm saying, play the system to your advantage sometimes. Exactly. Right? And especially exactly. if you're a good kid and a, and a boy, like I'm, I'm Jamaican and I'm, my mom all had boy, all of us are boys, but especially if you're a boy, they don't really question you a lot. Right. So my mom's like would sign permission slips for me to go on protests or like to go ex- all over the place. And it was never an issue unless I had to babysit my brother that weekend. Suddenly, mm. like, wait a minute, let me read what I just signed off. <laughs> what is what, what, what going on here? What's going on? <laughs> you going here? You going where? You going? <laughs> hey, boy. Copy out the question. I'm going to read the Bible. Copy also, but I'm gonna read the Bible. Why do I have to read the Bible? The whole Bible? Like no matter what I wanted to do, it was sit down and read the Bible. That's your answer. Okay, mommy. Um, all right, so Florida, Florida State. So I went to Florida State and um I followed this this pretty girl into an acting company. Um and went in there. I didn't know how to they were just like, well, you can't just sit here and look know, at the pretty girl. Here, here, this, this, this woman. <laughs> um, so they're like, you have to do an audition. I was like, what's that? And they're like, well, you know, you gotta go, you go stand in front of us and, and, and you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, so I made some shit up. And right then, long, there. Story, long story short, I got in. Oh, off the shit you made up? I made it up right there on the spot. Off the cuff. And oh, a couple people were like, they were like crying and shit. And they're like, oh my God. And I was just like, okay, I guess like, okay, so I'm in. Yeah, I hate people like you. I hate, I hate people like you. People who it comes naturally for while versus me, I have to bust my ass and work and like study. Like this motherfucker just gets up and like boom, I'm in it. Yeah, whatever. It, it, there's, there's a curse to that. There, there is there's a, a downside to, to that. Which would be uh, what? The, which is that always getting what you want a too too much. Like I, you know, I, I never like studied for like a, in my exams except right. for like you know a few hours before. And you just kind of like hope that that magic is going to come to you. And sometimes, some most of the times, yes. But there were a few times when it bit me in my ass. I can agree um, that. What's that's that? Than, that's way better than what I thought he was going to hit us with. There's some uh, great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with that testimony. That's that's what shit I was going through in, in college. <laughs> but yeah, so so I was doing that. I got so I started doing a lot of plays, but um. In my freshman year, I wrote this um, this essay. I forgot about what, but my professor, unbeknownst to me, submitted it to uh, some type of an award, and I won. And she's like, "You know, submitted you, and 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 you won." I was like, "Oh wow, I guess I can write." So I decided to to you know be a uh, declare myself as a creative writing major, 
and still acted on the side and did well. I did. I was acting in the main stage production. They wanted me to join the drama school, but I, I was like, I was cool with uh, the writing side. And it was mostly like, you know, short stories, poems, poetry, you know, um, studying literature, et cetera. And um, I had got cast in the main stage production of Fences. Oh, shit. You know, I wasn't oh, part wow. of the drama school. And uh, so that was cool. And then, it, and then we had uh, the dude who, his name was Lloyd Richards. And he was the director of basically all of August Wilson's plays up to, I think through, I think through Joe Turner's Come and Gone, if not, yeah, I think through Joe Turner's Come and Gone, um, he was teaching at Yale, but he had retired and he was coming to do a distinguished lecture series at Florida State. Mm -hmm. And it was only open to drama students. So I was like, I have to get in that. And so uh, one night I broke into the school. That's what's up. I'm sorry, I'm out. No, no, no. no. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Statue of limitations have passed, right? Yeah. Yes, it has. Okay. So, so, so I, do, I like how you casually go over these things. Like, I didn't tell my mother that I, like, just started applying to, to, like, college and shit. And, yeah, I might have broken into this school because I had to. So, how did, why break in? Because there was, like, a time limit, and I found out about it, like, at, near the end. And I was like, oh, shit. And so they're just like, basically, I think it was like the next day they were going to start making selections. And um, I figured, look, I'm part of the, the, you know, I'm part of the main stage production of Fences. This guy not only did August Wilson, he also, he also was the director of uh, Lorraine Hansberry's Race in the Sun. Um, oh, wow. I was like, I have to get in this. And I knew it was only open to drama students. So I couldn't like just walk up in there and just find it. Like, who the fuck are you? What are you doing here? So I... Because where the uh, play was um, rehearsed, I knew how I could jimmy this one particular door That's what's and, and get in there. So I, signed my name, I got in and it was incredible. The dude was, he was like Yoda. He was like this big mm -hmm. <laughs> voice. And um, at the end of it, he was just like, and this is already my senior year. And he was like, you know, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do with your life? You know, and I was like, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll go back to Miami, you know, fuck around, I don't know. And he was like, well, if you ever, you know, stopped acting, I'd, I'd be very disappointed. And I was like, like oh, shit. No okay. shit. No pressure. No, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just met you and everything. Thanks for that. Yeah, it was like a six week, six or seven week um, intensive. Okay. So he, knew, he knew me pretty well by the end of it. Um, and I wasn't like a trained actor, so he, I was rusty. You know what I mean? I had like, he had to mold my ass. I had all this, 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 you know, I guess you call it talent and everything, but I was just like all over the place. And okay. um, and so Fences ended up going on tour. I went with it. And one of the actors, uh, she was in that show, Rock. She was Rock's wife. Oh, okay. Um, she was playing Rose. And she asked me at the end of the run, um, she was like, you know, what are you doing? What are you, you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, well, if you go to New York, I'll set you up with a friend of mine who teaches. So I was like, work. All right, I know I want to get the fuck out of Florida. I get back to New York, because I, I was born in Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, so I went back there, started doing a bunch of off, 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 off-Broadway theater. And so Jay, um, Jay, hold on. Yes, he has my life Was story, that, yes, yes. No, no, I'm saying, is that is that Long Island, that off, 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 off? No, that's right. I'm gonna say where where is are we in Queens at this point? Or at this point how it, old was, are we? it was so off Broadway. It was like a, it was like Flint, Michigan. You know what I mean? That shit was just. Awful. <laughs> it was oh, like in Buffalo. Living room. He, was, he was in Buffalo doing Broadway. <laughs> I like but like, but, 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 but let's just let's just stop right now before the story can, continues to grow because it sounds like he's about to take off in this story. Let's just stop and recognize that he got here because of the booty. Yeah. I was just, yeah, 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 yeah. I and never thought about it like that. Yeah, hey, no, the, one, the one time pussy didn't ruin a, a black drug. man's life. It's a terrible drug. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Trust me, half my trauma comes from it. All right? <laughs> I, follow, I follow the bitch and she didn't lead me to nothing. I mean, she led me to... 
<laughs> Sorry, never mind. Shout out to you, Miss Piggy. Wherever you are. Um, Voldemort. I was going to say she led you to all you can eat buffet. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to say, keep in mind, Kay was the one telling everybody that we couldn't say shit. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me. Okay, guys, I need you, you all to best behavior. Before we continue, and I don't, hopefully this doesn't offend you, but I'm just curious, how much of, you, of your success do you attribute to luck and just being in the right place at the right time? Well, it's, this is what I say about luck. And somebody okay. told us you know, a long time ago, it's all about luck, but you also make your luck. Mm-hmm. So all of the different things that I did, and there was a lot of different things. I mean, I had so many different, like, shitty-ass jobs in New York, you know, I was... I was one point doing like janitorial shit. I was driving equipment trucks through the city. Unless you worked, unless you worked for Lincoln Square Business Improvement District and you lugged those carts up to TKTS and you handed out, you try to hand out brochures to fucking tourists. Trust me, bro. Wait. In 90 degrees summer heat, you ain't had the worst job in New York, fam. Bro, I, I, I may have that. That car beat. was happy. And I had to be there at seven in the morning to set up by ten. That's nothing. I had to pick up equipment at three in the morning to drive okay. a truck to Jersey in February. Okay. From All the right. city. All right. All right. It's, it's not a competition. It's not the struggle competition, bro. It's not even this competition. Is, this I'm is, my dick is bigger than yours. That's that's all I'm saying. That's all, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh, I got what she said. said. Right? Stop your shit. Stop your shit. night, God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like George Costanza. <laughs> shrinkage! How did she not lost shrinkage? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, all right. So we're all the way off of Broadway now, right? Well, yeah, Broadway. and I'm gradually making my way doing better and better better theater. Um, so finally, I got to be off Broadway in this production uh, called The, the Exonerated. But while I was doing that, I was also doing like a lot of like real indie films. And, and, I, and I knew that what I was doing on stage, which was good, I would look at like performances of like Meryl Streep and, and Morgan Freeman. Um, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. There's a certain level right. of honesty. Right, I got it. Performance. Yeah. You, you can tell like a stage actor when they do film. You know what I mean? It's, everything is like studied and they know exactly what they're going to do at any given point. And then there's just there's certain actors who can be just completely free. And you're just like, wow, what is that? You know what I mean? Stupid and, question. Hmm? Stupid question, not to cut, stick a pin, but stupid question. When you're studying these actors, are you watching them in film or are you trying to watch film of them on Broadway? I'm watching them the difference in how you approach them. Yes, I'll say yes, there's, yes. The film and, and theater are, are two totally different. I should put it this way. What you know of theater is different than what you see in film. However, when you have a really good actor, like I saw Mel Streep um, do The Seagull, and I was like, oh, that's how you do it. Because he, it was in The Seagull, it was an incredible performance. It was like Philip Seymour Hoffman was in it, uh, Natalie Portman. Um, what's, that, what's that dude's name from A Fish Called Wanda? I forgot his name. But it had all of these stars. But Meryl Streep, you yeah. could put a camera on her at any given point, and you got the same level of freeness to her work that she would have done on, on if you put a, if you know if she was doing it on a, like a film set. Oh wow! And I'm like that's where I want to be, you know. So gradually, I, I started getting a few films at Sundance, and then finally, I got a lead in a film at Sundance, and we ended up winning our category. That's what's up. And a manager in LA was just like, yo, come out here, I can get you going. And I was, at that time I was a graphic designer at um, at uh, TV Land. Okay, and, and now this is your second t opportunity to make it to LA. Tell me your mom didn't block this one. She didn't block that, I was, I was a grown man. <laughs> uh, you're but also I mean, Caribbean, you're never grown. No, 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 okay, I didn't tell. <laughs> Trust me. I will say this for the most part, my parents are pretty open because I was always doing something as a kid. And they, right. they kind of, you know, they, they kind of stayed out of the way and let me do my thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
Well, with the like, Caribbean, the rule with Caribbean parents is that like they don't believe in creative as an as a career until it pays off. Perfect. So yeah. the second you get published in something, you're you, they see you on TV because then they're gonna say, "Oh, am I act? Am I actor?" But I'm not seeing yeah. another. So which channel is that? Yeah. 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 I'm not sure. My dad they, they don't still see that? Huh? To this day, my dad says, like, you know, at some, you know, you just have to stay in it. You're gonna make it one day. I'm good. I'm good. Pretty good. Right? You're gonna make it someday. My dad worked at American Airlines. I'm like, you know, I, I don't have to fly on one of your your D3 tickets. I can I can buy a ticket now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm telling you, if they can't call call Bakayana and say, "Yo, turn on the TV," so it slammed upon TV, yes. if they can't do that, yeah, you didn't make it. So that's so you didn't tell mom about the second trip to LA. Okay, so now yeah. we're in. And actually, that was my first. That was my first trip to LA. Oh well, I was talking yeah. about from like the first the offer. Oh yeah, the comic book. Yeah. yeah. I, I what what year is this? This what is, is this. Man? This was a, this was a while ago. I'm, I live in LA. We don't we don't discuss years. Yeah, I got you. I got you. No, I got you. I understand that. In town, I understand. It was that. about three years ago, my friend. I got you. Yeah. Matter of fact, it was eight months ago. I got here when I got here. This is during COVID. <laughs> oh God! So, I feel like that's how LA people are gonna judge like real LA people. Like, yo, did you stay during COVID? Because honestly, that's what we're doing in New York. Like. That's what people do in New York. Like, did you get up and leave? Then you're not a new, a real New Yorker. But if you stayed during COVID when everything was shut down, yeah. now you're a real LA. Like, um, apparently, I could move back to New York and get like a three bedroom apartment for like four fifty a month. At oh, this bro, point. it's disgusting right now. <laughs> if anything, like, yeah, like the Saudis and the Asians are about to buy up all of New York because everybody is bouncing. Like, they are running yeah. for the fucking hills. And yeah, that's a whole nother argument. Um, well, I'll, I'll say that I know, I know we're, we're, we're kind of like derailing, but that's what COVID has done to the entertainment industry is it's now people are realizing they don't have to be in a city to be a part of this industry anymore. You know what I mean? They could be wherever the fuck, as long as you have good Wi Fi. <laughs> As long as you have a Wi-Fi and an iPhone 12, you can be a creator now, right? Yeah. And um, <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I don't feel really like I'm not. I don't say that to be diminishing. Diminish. Come on now. Come what on. it is, you know, what I'm saying what it takes to be a creator. I'm just saying, like, technology has made afforded us the opportunity to. If you have the drive, you can make it yourself, right? Absolutely. And one thing, um, since we're here, this actually is a perfect segue, but since we're here, the topic of distribution of movies, right? Like, because if you think about it, I've seen Tenet, I, we, we reviewed it earlier um, when it first came out, we saw it in the theaters. Um, not a lot of people out there. Definitely didn't, I don't know if it has made the money, but from what I was looking at in my theater, it didn't look like it was about to, right? But yeah, movies- and then movies Movies like that need a theater. They, yeah, it's not this. No matter how, like they need that big budget. They need the explosions. But we're still seeing a lot of these uh, streaming platforms, your HBO Maxes, your Amazon Primes, that are putting out content that rivals anything that's in the theaters. Anyway, so where do you see the film industry going as far as it being con how it's consumed and how it's created going forward? I, honestly, right now, no one knows 100%. Um, but I will say the streamers are starting to become king in that whole thing. At some point, we're going to go back to movies, movie theaters. And, and so, you know, some states have different rules or, um, you know, whatever. But um, I don't, it all depends on how much of a, a handle we get on this whole COVID thing. Like, do, will these vaccines work? And they may work for you individually, but you know, from what I understand, it just means that you won't get sick. You may still have it and still be able to infect another person who, who isn't, who doesn't have the vaccine. So I'm thinking it's going to be at least a good two years before we even start to like really get normalization with theaters again. But in that time, a lot of damage can happen 
you know, and that's because, what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. They, I'm in the travel in uh, hospitality industry, and they are pro- projecting that it won't be coming back around to probably like 2024. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. Oh God, no. Oh no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I'm talking. Yeah. I thought like sub by summer of 2021, we would be looking a little bit. We would start and we would start see a little. Stop bit. Stop watching CNN, Jay. Turn that nah, CNN bro. off at night, bro. Just cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so that's my thing, right? Like even with your projection, as far as like the two years before you see normal, what then becomes normal, right? Streaming. Streaming. Okay. It's, it's you know you invest in the big TV. Because... <laughs> yeah. Can I go get my wife real quick and then you say that? <laughs> You know, you know how many idea how long I worked on my wife to get my TV, <laughs> my eighty-two inch TV. Yo, I. <laughs> and I I've been, I've been trying note, to tell her. Yo, as a side, as a side note, and it was not my best my best look, but it was delivered during the home birth of my child. <laughs> uh huh. I was like, <laughs> uh huh. I'm like, yeah, you got a delivery downstairs, and I'm like, what? Um. I got delivery uh, right here. Hold on, hold on, got, hold yeah. on, hold on. Wait, wait. Did you pass off your newborn to go get your, to go sign for your TV? No. So I I'm, said you pass off down. your newborn. To... Wait, I sent my friend down to go get the TV, and she okay. did that, but then she didn't have the tip, and I knew that the tip was in my car, so, so I had to run. I'd be like, just don't give birth. I'll be right back. Just, just squeak. <laughs> Just squeeze. Don't push. Just squeeze. <laughs> baby, 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 I know you're busy right now, but hold on. Yeah. Right, one second. I'll be lock right your, Lock your ankles together real quick. Uh, one second. <laughs> he, was, he was like, he was, he was like, baby, gonna love Dora on this. Oh, my oh God. my God. <laughs> she hasn't let me forget that yet. I, yeah, I was only going for a minute and a half. I ran. Bruh. I should, I should get some credit. Yeah, no, she she's a she's a true she's a keeper, like one hundred percent. Like she she wins, she wins this one. Because trust me, I will be dead right now. <laughs> well, Mel, you you got like a whole basketball team, so you good money. Like you, babe, I you're only five centimeters dilated. I know when it's coming. We got time. Like we good. At this point, point, you might deliver mine. Shit. <laughs> um, no. Nothing but a bird. Just say the Bro, word. Do you know how expensive these babies are? Sorry. Anyway, um, yeah. so industry, right? Uh, invest in a big TV is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I don't see nothing is going to be the same. You know, it's, it's just it's just not. Even like I was talking to a friend of mine who um, who's a TV director today, and he was like, how you know, tech scouting and, and scouting for locations. So right. happening virtually now. Somebody's going in there and taking a camera, and they're they're doing this, and you're on, you're at home. Like this is happening in Canada. He's home watching his iPad or whatever it is, and he's just like, yeah, no, go this way. Okay, we can we can sh- we can set up this shot over here, but that's how it's happening now. Damn. Everything. Wait, that, like, there's a benefit from a cost-effective standpoint in the for producers, especially in financing these films. But as an actor, like, if your rate factors in how far, how long you're away from home, or like shooting on location, or maybe you get paid in the back end, how does the royalties work on a stream? Right? Like, you're not. I don't know. They barely got it figured out in music. <laughs> Well, they reissue plaques for people. They just had a big like um, a contract uh, negotiation. I mean, that's one of the reasons why WGA um, had that strike that only literally just ended a few days ago. Finally, when the big two last two big agencies signed on, finally, and that was la- that lasted a year and a half. Um, I, I'm represented by one of those, and I had to like drop my agent um, because of it. But unfortunately, the 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 actors union is not as strong as the WGA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know they just went through negotiations. I've sort of, because of the writing side taking over, I don't focus on the acting stuff so much, but, and I don't know how good of a deal they got. Um, because a lot of people, you know, I remember when I was broke, it was residuals 
That I like how you said it was. I like how you said was. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't let that go over your head, ladies and gentlemen. My man said was like, hey, hey, you peasants. Because there was time, you know, I was I was pretty broke. I was afraid of, of like being homeless, you know what I'm saying? Up until six years ago, you know what I mean? Um and just doing odd jobs and, and it was literally having a certain amount of residuals come in allowed me to pay my rent. And if those weren't there, I was fucked. You know what I'm saying? And now they as an actor. As an actor, yeah. I wasn't making money as a writer yet. I had done a few um scripts that uh even though they, they won awards and stuff like that, there's no money, no real money, nothing, nothing that's gonna um you know carry me from you know year to year. Um yeah. Prathy mentioned that early in her interview also is as far as like the, the awards don't equal immediately translate into like success and limos and like like yeah, it's like no. great, but then then it's immediately thereafter, it's like okay, now what? Like yeah. Yeah. No, it, what those what those programs and I love those programs because they 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 really helped me out a lot. Like um Tribeca All Access, like Independent Film, um Independent Film Week, um Film Independence. Um, they gave HBO fellowship. Um, they gave me a lot of tools, a lot of connections, etc. But they're really just things for your resume. You know what I mean? Um, okay. You mean to fast, to like to fast forward after you know I had the the, the two scripts um, that I did that got me into those those um, those uh, organizations. Um, I wrote a pilot, and that's what got sold. And from there. And when I say so, I didn't make any money. It was this, this whatever, if come deal, um, which I didn't know, understand at the time. I thought, I was like, I'm paid! <laughs> no. No. Did you say, fuck your couch? Did you jump on your couch and say, fuck this couch? <laughs> no, but the closest the closest I got to that was after after I'd gotten um, that soul and it didn't, you know, it didn't translate into money. I uh, I was driving Lyft, Lyft and Uber at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. from app to app. And as you pick up people, and I got a call um, that this dude had read the pilot, and he was starting a, a new show on either TNT or TBS. I can't remember what it was, and he wanted me to 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 come write for the show, and I had somebody in my back seat, and as soon as I as they they <laughs> as they as I you know dropped them off, I grabbed the fucking <laughs> side the, the Uber sign and threw that shit out the window. <laughs> just, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Yo, Yo. That, was, that was on Saturday and I had to start on Monday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now let's uh so we've t- speaking of your resume and like the transitioning from Uber driving, um <laughs> the boys on Amazon yeah. Prime currently oh, available man. all seasons. Lamel, for the record, Lamel is a big fan of the show, <laughs> a huge fan. He has been trying to get us to do a review of this show. Like, Mel, how long has it been? From jump. Like, <laughs> jump. <laughs> uh, okay, so tell us about it. How did you get your how did you get started on it? Why so, should Mike and I go watch this show? Oh, you all y'all haven't seen it? No, I watched I the, I, I watched oh, the watched episode it? you got uh you were credited for writing for just the other. Oh, you night. Got, yeah, you gotta start from the top. Yeah. No, top. but no, but even just watching that one episode, I'm like, oh, I'm into this. This this is my type of shit. Mike, you so this is my no, nah, this is uh my lane right here. I'm gonna watch it. You. Lamel ain't sell the show at all. No, Lamel no, no, had no, us no, watching Lamel had us watching all kind of crazy shit first. Let's let's get that out first. Lamel <laughs> had us watching all kind of nuts so shit like nothing you would ever put on in your life. And then he just comes out of the blue with some title called The Boys. And it's like with everything going on with all the alphabets that are available, it's like I didn't I didn't really take the title in my earlobe. It didn't hit my drum kind of you know it hit it in a a weird kind of marinate, wobbly right. way. Yeah. yeah, it didn't. It you, didn't see it in right. You had him on your pay no mind list. His everything that he would suggest. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. He was. He was. He was. <laughs> we'll get to that, Lamel. Yeah, we, we. You know. You know. You know that, that hyper kid in the class. You just. Yeah. 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 We'll do that too. Yeah. We. We just had to. You know. Feed him a little bit. Like we gonna get to it. I yeah. bet. I bet. 
I've been pushing this since. Jump no, but, but my real reason for my real reason for not wanting to watch it was because Jay don't ever finish nothing, and. Wait so a minute. No. We, we all on. watch it and we come to record and take like, well, I ain't watched that one. Damn. Yo, so this, this has I happened watched, more than yo, one occasion. My and so we had to go through Reggie. two seasons. I was like, let's not do it. But let's get back to this. You know. Lies and inequities. I can't believe I was nothing on, I said. Lies and inequities. I, I, I was on your side. I was like, Jay, do. Oh, wait. No, nah, he do do that shit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It was, it not, was, not, not, only, not only do you do black people wrong, but you don't finish shows on time. I just wanted just to for the I just want to reset the room. Listen, I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. We talking about being on time? Damn. You missed two biggest two of the biggest deadlines in your life, like within the first five minutes of this podcast. So timing, yeah. hey, yeah. See, hey, Caribbean hey. people time. It's a whole nother time. Yeah, that's fair. That Okay. Yeah. Caribbean people. Yeah. That's, that's real. real. That's that's real. real. That's real. That's what a run on CP. It's real, bro. Like, it, <laughs> like, what a run on CP side, too. They're like, yeah, man, we got y'all on your trip. Exactly. It was one time, Slim. It was one time, man. Like, wifey was in the air. You're doing two moves. Like, spend time with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ain't, like, she wanted to watch some. Anyway. You know, she's moving, moving, right. moving right along. I'm gonna get into it though because it seems as though as though everybody else is loving it. Um, but um, yeah. So the boys, what can you tell me about it or tell us about it and uh, how you get started on it? Sure. Uh, so the second show that I did was called Timeless, and it was on NBC, and it was created by Sean Ryan, who created the the uh, not the Wire, but um, the Shield. And um, it was uh. And by this dude, um, Eric Kripke, who created Supernatural mm. and um, you know, a bunch of other stuff. And so, and really enjoyed my time with Timeless. Um, but again, I never thought I would be going into TV writing. You know what I mean? I always just wanted film. And so when it was over, I just told my reps, like, I'm not doing TV anymore. I'm done, I'm done. I got married, you know, my wife and I had a super, super, super long honeymoon. And then I took the rest of the year off. And I was just like, I'm just working on my stuff, you know, just say no to everything. And they still set me up stuff, and I said no. And then um, can we uh, can we can we get a moment of silence for like how you killing them over here, like with the flexing and shit? With the who? With the flexing? Took the whole year off. Took the whole year off. <laughs> I honeymoon for half, and then yeah, fuck it up. <laughs> Yeah. All we did, all we did, for six months straight, we fucked and drank. Well, I mean, I'm real bougie at this point. I was like, hey. It's not a sexy look. Hey, man. <laughs> okay, so. I'd save my money. I'd save my money. I didn't have any debt. You know what I mean? So it's just like, okay. Yeah, don't be. Yeah. You're not pocket watching. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Eric had started reaching out to me. And um, like you know, trying to like you know, like what are you what are you doing? I'm like I ain't doing shit. You know what I mean? I'm just working on my own stuff. Blah blah blah. And um, he asked me to, to take a look at the pilot. And and my girl knows she's just like, don't worry, you don't have to go work for anything. I got you. Held me down. Now it's time for me to hold you down. Just keep you know following your dream. Blah blah. I love this. I yeah, she's she's awesome. She's Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, she's, she's like. Winner! <laughs> right. One that sweet thinks. That's oh, it. Oh, God. In the room next door, she can hear everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> and you think I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not my, first so, Zoom, not my first Zoom interview, people. Not my first Zoom <laughs> So she, so then I, I popped in the, the pilot and I was watching it and I just started laughing. That and she was in the other room and she was like, oh, fuck. She's going to take it. <laughs> so I was still in the mindset of I'm not going to do anything, but this shit is awesome as hell. And I knew where I would want to go with it, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't really, I mean, I was, I was, although I was a comic head, I knew of the boys, but I never read any, any of the, um, the issues. And um, I went in and I just kind of just talked. I was like, yo, this shit is hot. If I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm not saying I am. 
You know, I mean, you know, I know this, we're just talking here, um, but I would do this, this, and this. There's so many issues that we can tackle. Me too. You know, this is all before Black Lives Matter, but all you know, all of these social, you know, uh, things with corporations, things, you know, all of these issues that could be put in there in a very subversive way. And I was just like, I Wait, you're telling him this? What's that? You're telling him this, like? Yeah, this, this, you know, we're, we're just sitting in the office and we're just, just talking shit. And I was like, this is what I would do. Cause I, it just felt like it had so many, um, and you've seen, well, if you've seen the pilot, you kind of understand. Oh yeah. There's so many opportunities for stuff. And I was just like, that's what I would do. I'd never seen a show like tackle shit like that. And then I was just like, yo, well, good luck with it, man. Peace, you know, talk, you know, whatever, whatever. And as I was pulling out of the, the, um, the, the uh, parking lot, um, his exec called me. She's like, "Yo, you crushed it." I was like, "What? What?" He's like, "He wants you to start on Monday." <laughs> I was just like, "What am I saying that? Let me." Th- yeah, let me let me go discuss this with with wife. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it was just like it was honestly, and for people who know me, it's like I would have been a fool to pass that up. You know what I'm saying? It just it just you don't, especially in TV or in, in anything, you don't get those opportunities coming often that mm. just fires on every single cylinder. If I said no, I, I to this day, I would have tattooed jackass right across my head. It, it, you know, so it's been fucking incredible, you know, um, joining it and being able to kind of like, you know, especially I can't wait for people to see uh, season three. Um, is we get into some shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. It's, it's, yeah. All right. We will, we, we will be reviewing that one now. Um, so you, you mentioned like, in, have they, any of the ideas as far as like the direction you saw it going, um, when you sat down to meet with them, like mm-hmm. did they actually implement any of those into the first or second season? Was in the first, um, because they, they, I only came in in the second season. Okay. 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 So uh, all I saw was the pilot. I didn't know where they were going to go with the rest of it. So they already and had the first season shot. They were in, well, at that point, I think they were in post. I think they were in post on the first season. Or there was okay. a, maybe still a couple um, episodes still being shot. Um, but, at the, you know, they were calling me in for this. No, no, no. They were done. They were in post because by the time they called me in, the second season had already started. Okay. So I came in and, you know, and I'm the only black person in the room and I'm, you know, I'm listening, I'm trying to catch up and, you know, this, this with a writer's room, you know, there's maybe 10 to 15% of it is actually writing. Outside really? of that, it's, it's, you're sitting at a conference table and you're throwing ideas and you're breaking character, especially the way that Eric works. You know, it's, it's you know, you would think that it's all about the, the craziness, the, the the superpower action, the, all that stuff, but it's really at its core, which is how I love because I come from indie film, yeah. character, 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 theme, 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 arcs, arcs, arcs. You know what I mean? And how everybody builds within that one arc, that that thematic element that that you know affects everyone in that episode. And I just love it. And, and um, you know, it's it's a lot of work, especially dealing with so many characters I, honestly i felt like i was so overwhelmed that that uh that first season that came in because it was like game of thrones man i'm just like yo you gotta serve each of these characters so how do you find your voice right coming in after the second season or i'm sorry at the during, start of during the second season yeah during the second season you have like all these writers already they've been worked on it before they know each other's voice or whatever how do you come in and assert yourself other than, you know, like, did you pull the dick out and put it on the table or did you just say, yo, my dick is bigger than all of you Listen to me. I I go into any situation. I, I consider myself a dope ass right? You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm just, you know, I'm just, that's just, that's just what it is. You're good. Um, there are other people who are better, more um, uh, technical writers than me. Mm-hmm. I, will, I will say, of course there are, but I have an instinct for certain things um, that, again, my two uh, feature screenplays won awards. I've only written three projects, those two and the pilot, and the pilot got sold. You know what I'm saying? So, so you're three for I, three. I don't have to put it on the table because it's just apparent. It's just, yeah. and it's true glory. 
you know what I mean? sweatpants. Okay, we get it. <laughs> My dick waves a drag wherever it goes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but at the same time, I'm coming in as you know the only black writer. Okay. And so you know you, you get that thing of just like, what's he doing? So, can I just as as the only black writer on there, man? Mm. Why uh? Why y'all had him do that to Mother's Milk, man? Come on, bro. Come on, man. We, 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 can, just, we can discuss that offline. Yeah, I was like, yeah, <laughs> man. Like, give it, come on, man. We'll discuss that offline. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> um, y'all, got, y'all two got to watch the damn season. Y'all know what they We will watch it. We're going uh, yeah. to watch it. I promise you we're going to watch it. I'll probably DM you as I watch it. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm creepy. I, and then I felt bad, but then I laughed again, and then I felt <laughs> bad. <laughs> so, so there's a there's a little bit. Um, so I'm a paralegal, and like I've been working as one for the past ten years. So I've, and I've ventured in different areas of law. So like anytime there's like a little bit of a legal aspect to the conversation, I kind of focus mm-hmm. it on there. Um, so you said like when you met when you met with them, you started like giving out some ideas as to where you saw the show could go, right? And I was wondering, like, are you apprehensive in doing that in the in the meetings? Because I recall a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half too, um, Orlando Jones right got into a little bit of a, a debacle on American Gods, right? So he ended up getting written off, written out of the show after giving up a lot of the ideas that they then implemented in the next season. I don't know where, what happened there legally, if he ever got paid or if it was just social outrage. But I do remember it was like a thing with it coming back and getting renewed by stars or whatever, um, them using some of his ideas. Do you, are you apprehensive about it when you, about showing it? Because at one point you have these meetings to showcase what you can do, but at the same time, the, contra- the ink ain't dry yet. Yeah, so, I, I'll, say, I'll say this. For the, the meeting that I had, it wasn't like I was going into detail, like, you know, I want to do this with, with you know, uh, X character. X character. You know, I wasn't like specific. It was just, it was more like a philosophical conversation of the possibilities that I saw with this show. Okay. Things that, that are on my mind, articles that I've read, you know what I mean? Places where, you know, um, that they can navigate. Because you know, I really wasn't considering myself necessarily as, you know, auditioning for the show as, as a writer. Um, it's funny because I was, I was in a, a convo on, on Clubhouse and somebody was asking about, you know, ideas and like, you know, do they need to, to copyright their idea or, or register their idea? And I'm just like, or like a treatment. It's like, why? And everybody has ideas. Some ideas overlap. What, what becomes the thing that, that where it can fall into like plagiarism or, or you, a legal issue is if it's written as a script. And mm-hmm. there are things that a judge can look at and be like, oh, you lifted that. You know what I mean? I could write a, a film about Me Too. There's a million and six Me Too ideas out there. Can somebody who has a Me Too story then sue me because I, I, I'm, I'm dealing with something on this subject matter? Right. No, you know what I mean? Even if we're doing the same, if I'm, if I'm writing a film about Asada Shakur and somebody else is, they're going to be two different films because human beings are different. There might right. be some things that overlap <laughs> as far as historically, you know what I mean? But it's, it's very if hard. You really want, if you want to redo the Tupac movie, please do. Like, for the culture, just please. <laughs> <laughs> do not put it, give him a fucking iPhone and have him kneel when he shoots, though. Like, just those are the only two things I ask. Remember, it's in the 90s before the iPhone, and he's not on his knees shooting at the fucking cops. Just do that, and then you I win. Just, I'm just saying. Calm down, man. It's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. Just throwing out ideas. We're a hey, conference room, guys, throwing out some <laughs> ideas. Um, okay, yeah, no, but yeah, you're, you were saying, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we timestamp, bro. We timestamp. Just oh, okay, okay. Um, um, no, but but like, I think it's ahead, a thing with creators as far as like you, your equity is your idea, right? And your marketability is your idea. So it's like when you're going out and meeting with people, 
I think a lot of the fear, I mean, we've had the, the, uh, tons of discussions about stuff like this on the, about our podcast on the back end. Um, so it was just, I just wanted to get your take on like, when do you think it's important as a creator to start divulging your, letting go of your creation or giving out these ideas? I would say for anybody, don't go into detail if it's like, you know, you know what I mean? There's, 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 there's talk you can do with the family, but mm-hmm. you don't want your neighbor to necessarily know that. You know what I mean? As far as the amount of level of detail that you go into, you know what I mean? It could be like, you know, you don't want your 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 your, your neighbor to know that mom and dad was fighting last night. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. It's it's it, it's it's a it's a I, would, I don't even want to call it tricky because it isn't really that tricky. Delicate, you know? maybe. It's it, it can be delicate, but it's like how can you necessarily prove it unless it's something that can be you know looked at directly and be like ah, this person actually did that. And I you know you hear about that with some projects. You there's not much you can do. You it know what I mean, and yet there's a lot you can do. But it's just a matter of if it happens to you. And I'm, I know that's an incredibly vague way of answering that. Oh no, but yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to let you off the hook. It's just so women, you know. You answered it like a, an attorney would answer it. So, thank you for listening. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and like. Share it with a friend. And also, tune in to part two where we break down Slim's movie pick, Martyrs. True View Podcast. Let's go.